Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to this Monday, July 29th, 2019 Market Watchers Live Show with your host, Tom Boley and Julius DeCampenar. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show, and for our regulars, welcome back. Well, we're starting a new week. Lots of earnings coming out this week. So far, off to a good start on the Dow. Dow Jones Industrial Average currently up 70 points. The S&P 500 down four. NASDAQ, uh, some of the recent leaders uh, taking a little hit today. NASDAQ down 50 points. The Russell 2000 down about nine. Ten-year Treasury yield continuing to consolidate between a fairly tight range between 1.95% and about 2.15% as we prepare for the Fed meeting this week. The volatility index continues to uh, trade down toward the low end of its recent range. It is up today about 4%, 12.65, but the overall downtrend since that June market bottom uh, continues for the volatility index. Leading to the upside today, we've got real estate uh, testing its 20-day moving average, so far failing. Uh, also, healthcare, so a couple of defensive groups leading to the upside today. Communication services and uh, consumer discretionary, though, two aggressive areas lagging on the day. Recent leaders, internet stocks, software stocks, both struggling, although you can see software once again gathering buyers at its 20-day moving average. Broadline retail continues to suffer after Amazon's report last week. And you can see Amazon, the main culprit, as it moves down to test its 50-day moving average for the first time in over a month. Apple getting ready to report its earnings tomorrow after the bell. Apple comes out with its latest earnings. It is testing a recent high, um, just going back a few months, right around that 210 level. It's going to be an interesting area for this stock to be sitting as it goes to report its latest quarterly results. Okay, Julius, we got a new week. First of all, thanks for uh, subbing for Aaron today. And uh, how's it going? Oh, I'm not getting Julius. Are you there? All right. Well, I yeah, guess. no, I'm here. Sorry, guys. I'm here. There you are. I knew you. Amateur, were. amateur, beginner error. Amateur <laughs> error. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> you only no, get, I'm here. You, you only get one error though, so that oh, was. Oh my god! I thought it was three strikes. <laughs> no, but... pressure's on now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, uh, how's it going out there? We're having a little bit of a mixed market today so far. Yeah, we do. Uh, and I'm glad to be uh, helping you out with some uh, some upgrades and downgrades later on. Um, you know, uh, looking forward to adding my bits and pieces to the show. There will be some RRGs in there. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to actually, that's going to be a treat for everybody today because you're going to be doing the upgrades and downgrades using RRG, which I think will be uh, somewhat fascinating for those maybe who aren't familiar with it. But uh, that'll give you a great visualization of what's going on with those upgrades, downgrades relative to the S&P 500. So that'll be pretty cool. All right. Well, we've got a busy schedule lined up, so we might as well just jump in and get going here. It is going to be a busy uh, week this week because a lot of big names have reported earnings, but we're going to start seeing more second tier names. I wouldn't call Apple a second tier name. They're definitely a first tier name. They'll report tomorrow, but there's a lot of other companies that will be reporting and really driving the NASDAQ this week. Uh, our upcoming schedule, as you can see, uh, tomorrow we've got ETF Corner. Uh, Dave Nettig is joining us with Mary Ellen McGonigal. And then uh, Wednesday, Jake Bernstein. Thursday, Roman Bogomazov. And I will do August seasonality on Friday the 2nd. So uh, you definitely want to stay tuned for that as we'll take a look ahead and see what history tells us about the month of August. Uh, today's agenda, we've got Monday setups, earnings spotlight with John Hopkins. He'll be with us in just a little while. And then the 10 in 10 with Ford Motor Company. That's our first stock. You can take a look at that chart, see what you think, see if you agree with my analysis, and then uh, we'll go through nine others. Julius will be working with me a little bit here, and uh, we'll give you those other nine stocks, annotate them, and uh, see if you agree with me on those as well. I do want to announce today we have changed our format, so it is just a one-hour show as opposed to the 90-minute show that many of you have grown accustomed to. So as you can see on the agenda today, some of the times have changed a little bit. Uh, but uh, all the great features and uh, segments and all will still be coming to you. All right, it is time to move on to today's show. We got a lot going on in just these 60 minutes, um, but I want to go over the 10-year uh, Treasury yield. There were no economic reports out uh, this morning, so that's a little bit of quiet 
time that we've got here in the market as far as economic reports go. But it, like I mentioned, there's going to be a ton of earnings reports. 10-year Treasury yield, about doing what you might expect uh, without a whole lot of earnings reports and ahead of the Fed, uh, which is the next couple of days. You see the 10-year Treasury yield remains in this downtrend. But after bottoming at the beginning of July, we bounced back up above the 20. And you can see we're just kind of straddling that 20-day. And the 20-day, which had obviously clearly been in decline, has been going sideways, mostly sideways the past couple of weeks, two, three weeks. So I think here with the 10-year Treasury yield, we're waiting. Uh, Treasury markets are waiting, see what the Fed has to say. I think just about everybody is in anticipating a Fed rate cut. Um, that'll be on Wednesday. I suspect we're going to get 25 basis points. Personally, I think the Fed should cut 50. I think that uh, there's certainly reason to cut 50. Inflation's not a problem. If inflation was a problem, or even if inflation was at the Fed targets, uh, then I think maybe 25 would be better. But with inflation lower than expected, I think there's an opportunity to lower by 50. I don't know if the Fed will do that, though. Jerome Powell, since taking over during his tenure, has been very slow to react. And so I suspect we are going to see a 25 basis point cut. Um, as far as earnings go, uh, more uh, bigger names will be out later this week. You can see here on the screen, though, Santa Fe reported this morning in Beat, Booz Allen, some other smaller companies. And when I say smaller, these are all, the ones you see on your screen are all 4 or $5 billion market cap companies or higher. They're not small companies. But when you compare them to the Apples and the Amazons of the world, they're much smaller. After the bell tonight, we'll be getting a number of reports there. Be interesting to see Beyond Meat, BYND, with that stock as volatile as it's been. You know, where is that going to go uh, after its earnings report? That literally could be anywhere. It's the stock, since going public around $45, or at least trading around $45 its first day, now trades at $221. So a lot of expectations built into that report. That will be one to watch after the close today. RNG has been a great performer. Um, and XPI in that semiconductor space. So we definitely have some reports that we're going to want to keep an eye on for sure. But let's start off with uh, Sanofi, S-N-Y. Here you can see the stock has been going sideways really for the last six months. It did gap up on today's news. If we pull up that relative chart, you can see that the sideways consolidation really dates back more than just six months. This is the last year. So it's been going sideways, but it's in the pharma space, which also has been going sideways. Uh, pharma relative to the S&P has been declining. So it's not in the best space. It's just an okay performer. I do like the volume that's picked up here recently. But again, this is probably not an area that I would be looking at uh, right now. Uh, let's pull up RNG. This is a stock that will be reporting after the bell. And you can see over the past couple of months, it is pulled back a little bit relative to its industry peers, but the overall uptrend remains in play. The group has been strong. I think the stock is just simply consolidating here on light volume. I think we're going to see another big report out of this company after the bell. We'll see. That is just simply an educated guess. I would be a little careful. Um, I want to show you that beyond meat though, BYND, this is what I was referring to. Look at this chart. It has been going straight up. Lots of interest. Got a lot of day traders in this, a lot of accumulation as well. Um, looking at food products, it has been good, but you can see Beyond Meat has been much, much stronger. Excellent relative strength. My feeling is they're going to have good numbers, but are the numbers good enough to sustain this move to the upside? A lot of expectations built into this report tonight. This will probably be one of the more interesting of the uh, earnings season. Taking a look at some other stocks of interest, these are not companies necessarily that are going to be reporting, but I was just looking at their charts today and I thought, well, you know, maybe uh, these are ones we want to keep an eye on. Xerox, if you notice, after breaking out above that April high, we pulled back, set a pretty good support area right around 34, tested it along with the 50-day moving average, uh, once again around that 34 level. Today, trading at 33.83. I'd be careful if the volume picks up this afternoon. And we see weakness here on Xerox, um, leaving a tail down below that support level and coming back up and closing above it could be a very bullish development, but a breakdown on the close today would be the opposite. So we want to be careful. Ulta, uh, Ulta Beauty. Now, keep in mind, specialty retailers have been struggling here in July. 
Alta on a relative basis, though, had moved back up to about an eight or nine month relative high versus its peers. But today it is moving back down. 340 has been a pretty good area of support. I think if we hold here, Alta looks pretty good. If we fail, then I think we're looking at perhaps all the way back down to test this gap support here at about 310, 312. So Alta has been a pretty good relative performer. Um, the specialty retailers versus the S&P 500, as you can see, have, has really taken a hit. And for that reason, if Alta fails to hold on to short-term support, I think you want to be more careful because the group has broken down. PayPal, remember this one last week, I was suggesting if I owned it, that I would probably look maybe at Square. Not really a fan of what's been going on here with PayPal. Look at the big volume on its earnings coming back down, breaking that uptrend line, short-term uptrend line. And now it is trading at about a six, seven week low. And on a relative basis, you can see how the relative strength is uh, quickly deteriorating here. So PayPal, which had been performing very well versus Square, has all of a sudden uh, lost its luster versus Square. You can see the last two months, PayPal versus Square underperforming. So the better choice now, in my opinion, is Square, which is squarely above that rising 20-day moving average. It did go, come up here and test this 82 and a half area, pulled back almost to the 20-day, now moving back up. A breakout above 82 and a half on Square would be very bullish. So this is one I'd, I'd be keeping an eye on. Remember Autodesk. Autodesk, when you look at it, was not doing too badly here on an absolute basis, moving back up above its 20. I didn't like it. And the reason I didn't like it, look at what's going on with the relative strength, Autodesk versus a software group. Software was going up. So that was helping keeping Autodesk afloat. But you see what happens when Autodesk, or excuse me, when software has a bad day, Autodesk falling apart here. And it's because it is now at a 52-week low relative to its software group. I would not be interested at all in Autodesk based on the way this stock is trading right now. A couple stocks uh, I mentioned in a Saturday article that I wrote in my Trading Places blog, uh, my three portfolios. Colgate is in my income portfolio. I want to go over a couple of these because they're holding up really well in a down market. And that's the whole idea behind this income portfolio. Colgate breaking out, nice volume. Even though the market's been down, we got a nice run here. Uh, uh, Kansas City Southern KSU, it's a railroad trying to make a breakout even with the, the market week, just reported really nice results. Another railroad, UNP, United Pacific, also up here trying to make a breakout. And then one last stock, uh, EQR, also trying to make a breakout here. But this one bothers me a little bit because it had a breakout earlier today. If we fail on the close, I think what we could have is a cup. And maybe we pull back one more time to the 20-day. If we get that breakout, then that would obviously be much more bullish. The stock is trending higher relative to its peers. That's a good thing. So if it breaks out, that would clearly be a positive. All right. Uh, let's go over here to the dashboard. And let's see here. All right, the stock that I wanted to show you today for the scooter has fallen off the list. But one thing you can do, um, and I'll show you that it is still struggling, but let's go into the scooter reports, small cap, and let's do the change. And so this is the same list you were just looking at, except it's just extended. And here is the one I was looking at, GTHX. This is G1 Therapeutics. If I pull up the chart, um, it is pulling back. It's actually off of its earlier low. That's why the scooter drop is not as much as it was earlier. Um, but I think sometimes when you look at these scooter drops to the downside, they can present some nice opportunities. I did annotate this. So let me show you this annotated. Well, no, I didn't get it annotated or I didn't save it. So let's go ahead and pull this up. I do want to show you on the same chart here. So G1 Therapeutics, you can see the scooter right here dropping. So it is fallen. That's why it was on that, li that list. But if you notice, the volume really picked up as it broke what I think was a downtrend followed by sideways consolidation. I think this could be a character change. So these, the pullback back to gap support, I think, looks very interesting. And we were just talking about the pharma is not really doing well relative to the um, S&P 500. 
But if you look at GTHX, it actually went to a about a six or seven month relative high to the pharmas. And I think it's starting to show some pretty good relative strength. So for that reason, I am choosing G1 Therapeutics as my scooter mover of the day. All right. All right. There you go. Um, there you go. It's time for the upgrades and downgrades. And um, I think you should be able to see my screen now. Gotcha. Uh, on the, on the left-hand side, I have loaded up an RRG with a bunch of upgrades. So there has been quite a lot of upgrades and even more downgrades. There's no way that I can go over all of these um, uh, stocks individually and annotate them and discuss them. But what I want to do is go over them using the RRG and see if I agree or disagree with the upgrades and the downgrades. Now, this RRG here has the upgrades. A um, couple that you can just off the bat say that you agree with is probably EHTH, which is in the leading quadrant, still moving much higher. Um, NVCR leveling off a little bit. Uh, inside leading S, Sprint Corporation and RMD are rolling over. I am not sure if I would agree with an upgrade from that level because they're starting to lose relative strength. One that I definitely agree with is Bud. And hey, Tom, I think you should agree with that. But it's great, right? <laughs> so um, it's inside leading. It just turned back into it. If you, if you scroll back the RRG, you can see that Bud you know, had been doing pretty well. It went through its first stage and then through weakening and then jump back in. And it's got a lot of new upside potential. And I've got the chart here um, for Bud. And you see a nice breakout. And what I really like is the base in the relative strength with the turning up of the RS ratio. So that I really like, and I agree with the upgrade there. Um, on the upgrades, a couple that I definitely disagree with, and uh, I guess you can imagine where I'm looking. So. VLRS and TRI, they're inside weakening. I don't think that's time to upgrade a stock because they, they just had their move and they're, they're starting to roll over and move down. And if you're inside the lagging quadrant, you can see that COG, Cabot Oil and Gas, FIX, and KEX are stocks that are just running for the doors. They are starting to underperform. They are underperforming. They've got a big underperformance trend going. So uh, I'd be very, very um, uh, careful with upgrading these stocks. Now, the second RRG that we're looking at is the one with the downgrades. And that's even uh, filled even more. A um, couple of downgrades that you do not agree with uh, are the ones that you find here. So that's uh, Galapagos, actually a Dutch company. So I you know, disagree by default. Uh, and that's RA Pharmaceuticals. These are super strong stocks. Uh, and I don't see any reason uh, for a downgrade. And another one that makes me think of you, Tom, is Starbucks. How can somebody downgrade Starbucks when it moves like that? It's just Never. forbidden. Never. Never. No. How can they ever downgrade Starbucks? Exactly, exactly. So, it, you know, Starbucks, you cannot downgrade, but especially not when it's inside the leading quadrant and with a strong RRG heading powering further to the right. So um, I don't agree with this downgrade. Um, let's move on to a couple. Uh, PayPal, you talked about. Uh, I think that I agree with the downgrade. Um, it's inside weakening. It's had its run. Tom annotated the chart. It's starting to deteriorate. I don't think PayPal will do very good. So we, we agree with the downgrade here. And uh, TRI, MHK, same, same story. And the ones that are probably seriously uh, bad. So this is the one that you um, disagree with from a downgrading. So these are downgrades. But look at um, um, Marriott Genetics. It's, it was in, in lagging, still in lagging, but it turned up and it's, it's got a big move ahead of it. So it, it looks as if it has bottomed out. Let me quickly look at the chart of this because I haven't done that yet, but I'm interested to see how this looks on a chart, on the, on the price chart. All right, so they're downgrading it here, but what we as technicians see that it is like in this support zone between 24, 26, it's actually started a new series higher highs and higher lows. Um, it could be working off a bottom here. 
you're pretty late if you're downgrading it here. Let me put it like that. Um, and uh, I think that was it for the upgrades and downgrades, Tom, because we can go much longer because there are a lot of upgrades and downgrades. But I think we've had the most important ones. And we've shown the use of RRG and how you can run over a universe that comes from a different setting, in this case, upgrades and downgrades from analysts and use RRG uh, to make up your mind from a technical point of view. And I'd encourage everybody, when you're using RRG like this, then take it into your own workflow. This right-hand screen here, that's my workflow. That's what I look at. Feel free to make it your own. Take any screen, any setup, any layout, and use the RRG as your starting point before you go into your own workflow and see what's happening. Sounds good. And uh, from what I gather there, that this buds for me. Is that what you were saying? That buds for you for sure, man. <laughs> I'm more of a Molson cores kind of guy, so it would have to be more of TAP, T-A-P. But technically, uh, I don't want any part of it. I'm not drinking from that fountain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to move on to the uh, uh, Monday setups. And, of course, last week, um, Aaron and I gave our picks. And I'll say – we had a couple pretty good picks last week. Um, Aaron went with Axon Enterprise, AAXN. That is in the defense group. And I went with APPS, which is Digital Turbine. That is in the software group. i tell you what, we picked a couple of good areas of the market, number one. And then they both uh, performed really well. So let's take a look first at the uh, AAXN. I'm not sure percentage-wise. I might have gotten Aaron, but i tell you what, both these stocks look pretty good. If you look back to the last week, the stock was just breaking above the 20 day. I know Aaron likes to use her PMO. And from what I recall, that was turning back up. And so it gave her a really good signal. Uh, AAXN doing very well. Getting up close to this gap resistance, I might be a little careful there. But I think overall, it looks pretty good. Maybe one word of caution for me looking at the relative strength is that versus the defense group, it has been downtrending and starting to roll over a little bit. I think if it lost that July relative low, I'd be a little careful because some of the other defense stocks look really good and I would have no problem switching out and moving on to those. APPS, I was actually looking at this stock back at 485. I bought it. And for those who held, if you did get it, you held up near 550, you can thank me because after it went up about seven or 8%, I took my profits and then watched it go all the way up to 550. But APPS did come down, hold on to this price support level where it broke out and then had a nice run, uh, essentially tested that prior high from a week or two earlier, and now it's pulled back a little bit from that. But it did get up close to 550. It's still up, I don't know, probably 7 8% from where it was uh, when we talked about it last Monday. So both those worked out really well. So Julius, the pressure is on us to try to come up with something to try and top those two. What do you have for this week? <laughs> All right. I, uh, I I went over the Dow Jones Industrials because you told me not to pick these really small cap stocks and pink sheets. So I limited myself to the Dow stocks. I actually got three names that I want to throw on the screen here. First one is Disney. Um, inside the lagging quadrant, but turning really rapidly and close to the benchmark. And when I look at the chart on the right, I see a nice breakout and relative strength improving. So that is one that's on my uh, on my radar for the coming weeks. I think I really like that stock. Um, the other one is Pfizer. So that's uh, PFE, where are you? Uh, here you are. Insight improving and moving higher. And the reason why I picked this one is because it has uh, triggered a turtle soup buy setup. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, go back into my blog and look for turtle soup and you'll find the setups in combination with an RRG. And this is exactly what I mean. It's testing a 20 day low and going above it. And that's happening today as we speak. And I like the rotation here uh, going into the improving can, uh, quadrant. So I think this is a pretty good candidate for a nice bounce this week. Um, but I'm going to bet my money, uh, maybe, it's, I don't know, a little bit cowardice on um, JP Morgan. Um, JP Morgan is inside leading. It's a little bit more secure. If you rotate the chart, you see that it went in there, rolled over, and then it hooks to the right, which means that it's making a very rapid rotation. And it's making the same rotation as Goldman Sachs, which is maybe, let's say, its bigger brother. Um, and that's the reason that I'm going with JPM and not with Goldman Sachs is because JPM is 
lower on the, J, the, the, the RS ratio scale. So it's got more upside potential. And if we look at the chart here, JP Morgan, then it is like breaking above a high. It hasn't really done it, but the relative strength is improving. And what made me trigger to go with GPM instead of um, Pfizer is that the uh, financials are actually doing pretty good as a group. So that's why I'm picking JPM uh, inside financials. And I'm doing it over Goldman Sachs because Goldman has already run a bigger course. And I think JPM has better uh, potential in coming days. All right. Sounds good. I actually like it because I think the financials are starting to show some pretty nice strength. Uh, banks just broke out to a recent high. I think the uh, Dow Jones U.S. Bank Index um, at its close on Friday was at its highest level since back in October of 2018. So I think you're you're getting into a group that's certainly starting to show a lot more strength. And J.P. Morgan's been one of the leaders within the bank. So I, I like the pick. I think that uh, you got something going there, but I'm going to try and top you. <laughs> of course. Let's see. We'll, we'll talk next week. Yes, we will. Um, all right, I'm going to go, my pick for this week is going to be um, Dollar General, DG. And I actually bought this today myself. And uh, I actually have a second entry in right above that 50-day moving average. So if it moves a little bit lower, I'll get in to a second entry. And I'll tell you the reason I like the stock. Number one, the specialty retailers I talked about earlier have struggled. We pulled back, saw the big drop, went to about a six-month low. Look at Dollar General relative to, to its peers, though. It has broken out right here above this double top, and it's come back down and it's testing that area of relative support. The group overall on an absolute basis hasn't broken down. It's just that on a relative basis to the S&P, it's broken down. So I'm not ready to write the group off just yet. I think we could get a rally. And even if we don't, I still think dollar general because we are at price support or nearing price support. Um, I just think this is one that has, it's a really good candidate to to make that turn back to the upside. If money rotates at all back into the specialty retail group, I think you've got one of the leaders here. I think uh, the fact that the stock's been down from that 145 level down today, getting as low as 130, uh, 135 and a half, I think that's just presenting an opportunity for Dollar General. So I like this one. I'm going to go with it current price, 136.34. Let me make sure that that is the current price. We'll go, oh, I get three cents break here, 136.31 is where it is sitting now. So that's going to be my pick for this week. Um, but I do have a couple others that I will show really quickly. MSCI, this is a stock that is in my model portfolio right now and hasn't been a great performer the last week or two. But right here at about this 230 level, it has been very strong. So I actually got into this last week. So I am holding this one right now um, at this area, just looking for maybe a return trip back up close to that 247, 248 area. Um, if you look at its peers, it continues going higher. MSCI relative to its peers has been downtrending. However, it's been consolidating. It hasn't done anything bad on its chart. It went crazy for a while. And as a result, you can see the huge relative outperformance. I think this consolidation is an opportunity. We will see. Volume picked up last week. I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to keep a tight stop. A close blow 230, especially on increasing volume, would take me out of the stock. But I think this is another one that could do well. It is in a group that is in favor relative to the S&P. And then the last one I have, this one's a little out of character. It's in the expiration and production group. If you like energy, this is a stock that has been showing relative strength the last two months, quite a bit of it, actually. And off of this downtrend, look at the volume coming in. It's not just moving up. It's moving up on volume. Notice when it comes back down, it's holding its rising 20-day moving average. Because it's in a poor area of the market, I'd keep a tight stop. Close below the 20-day would take me out of the stock. But I think that this is one that certainly gives us an opportunity um, to, you know, if you want to get into a group that's been beaten down, if that's more your style, I think CRK is one on this pullback that could help you. All right. Uh, those are our Monday setups for this week. So Julius going with uh, JP Morgan. I'm going with Dollar General. Uh, we'll be back with John Hopkins and earningsbeats.com after this message. The point of on trend is to keep you on the right side of the trend. Mostly dealing with stocks and ETFs, I'm going to point out bullish setups on stocks and ETFs that are in uptrends. 
I'm also going to look at some downtrends, but those are designed also to tell you which stocks and ETFs to stay away from. The main point is to stay on the right side of the trend, the uptrend. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, it is time now for our Earnings Spotlight. And uh, with us, we have John Hopkins, president of EarningsBeats.com, good friend, former partner. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing great, but I'll tell you what, I, you know I follow these earnings closely, and it is starting to get kind of hectic. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you hear the analysts talking about, you know, before earnings season kicked into high gear, which it really did last week when you heard from the heavyweights, um, you heard the analysts talking about, you know, expectations. Are we going to have numbers going to be any good? And I'm telling you, I know how the numbers are good. You don't just get to an all time high, you know, in the major indexes if earnings aren't there. And yep. so, so far, you have to say, no matter what you say, yes, there's been some companies that have come up uh, short. Uh, Amazon, you know, is one to speak about. But mm -hmm. then for every Amazon, there's a Google. And, uh, you know, you can sort of go on and on with, mm -hmm. you know, companies that are that are beating expectations. I think expectations were kind of low. I think we're getting today is the market's very famous for pouting just before the Fed, Right. They got to start shedding some tears, you know, let the Fed know we got, you know, you got to come through for us or the market could go lower. It's a tantrum. It's a little Fed tantrum going on right now. But everything I'm seeing, you know, in terms of uh, the major indexes and the way earnings have behaved, maybe we'll get some more pullback. But honestly, Tom, we're one day removed from the S&P and NASDAQ hitting all time highs. Yeah, I think we're going to new highs. I'm pretty bullish. I know that uh, maybe doesn't sit well with some out there maybe who are more bearish, but that's fine. Everybody has different views. I think that the Fed is going to cut this week. And I think having a more dovish Fed along with a more dovish central banker group around the globe um, sets up beautifully for equities. I mean, I yeah. think eventually we're going to see money rotating uh, you know, we're already seeing a lot of beats. You, you mentioned Amazon going down, but there are a lot more companies like Google that have been going up after earnings reports. We've seen a ton of companies uh, blowing away estimates. I'm, I'm, another one I could bring up is AutoNation, which I think was one of the best earnings reports out so far this year. You can see the huge move up. Stock was at 42. Now all of a sudden hits 49 just a couple days later. So I think when you're got an, when you have an environment like this where the Fed is on your side if you're an equity trader and you've already got stocks moving up to all-time highs. You've got four of the five aggressive groups, sectors that is, trading at at least 52-week highs, a couple of them trading at all-time highs. This is a pretty good time to be invested, I think, in the stock market. Could we pull back? Have we been extended? Sure. I mean, market can always pull back. Yeah. But, you know, the problem is sometimes you sit on your hands waiting for these pullbacks and in a bull market advance, when you're breaking out, it can get really boring as the market just keeps going higher and higher and you just keep sitting and sitting and it's more and more difficult to pull the trigger to get in. I think the market goes higher. Yeah, which brings me, by the way, to a handful of stocks, you know, because what, what we do at Earnings Beats, we wait for companies to report earnings. We scan the market, find those that beat expectations, have good looking charts. And then we're patient. We're not chasing them into earnings. Instead, what we're doing is waiting for them, particularly the ones that gap up on sharp volume, wait for them to pull back to key levels, because these are the stocks, Tom, that traders are looking for. And I've got a couple um, we're talking about that are in the portfolios that we share with our members. Uh, the first one is ENPH. I know this is one that you've you know, looked at many times. And, you know, even going back, you know, if you just go back to uh, the end of uh, last year, when it was sort of, it just consolidated, mm -hmm. like throughout um, 2018. And ever since then, it is, it is, you know, the relative strength on this thing has been awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, and this for this reason, you want to take notice when you see a stock that's breaking out relative to its peers, 
that is a good sign. And then when you see that its peers are starting to break out relative to the S&P 500, that's giving you a great, a great group and a great stock within the group. This is really a poster child for what we try to look for. You see stock yeah. price going up, renewable energy going up, and your relative charts all going up simultaneously. This stock is on the aggressive in the aggressive portfolio mm -hmm. that I announced back on May 17th or May 19th. And you can see the stock was under $15 at the time. It's 21 now. This is a 40% move in two months. Yeah. And these are the type of stocks that carry those portfolios. Yeah, it's awesome. The next one is um, KTOS. Yeah, another uh, big defense stock. I love this company. Just look at this thing. <laughs> yep, I wrote about this in your uh, Earnings Beats uh, Digest, digest yep. this morning uh, mm -hmm. because so many defense stocks are coming out with great earnings right now. We know defense has been picking up. Look at defense relative to the S&P 500. It just set about a nine-month high relative to the S&P 500 last week with a lot of those earnings. This has been the best one of the group, and they report in a couple of weeks. I see nothing wrong. I mean, it's pulled back the last couple of days, but I think this one still looks very good, and I own it. Here's another one, Roku, <laughs> R-O-K-U. Yeah, put on your seatbelt and your crash helmet, uh, not because I think it's going to crash, but just because it's extremely volatile. Um, but this is in the model. Uh, yeah, this one's in the model portfolio. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has been extremely strong. Computer hardware has been picking up. But Roku has been probably the best stock, if not if not the best, one of the best in computer hardware, continuing to do well. Now, sure. the next one of in our uh, portfolio, one of our portfolios that you may help um, actually to launch it higher, because I know you like Chipotle, CMG. Oh, yeah. I love the burritos there. I could uh, go for one right now. You didn't oh, have it's lunchtime. Yet. Stop. Yeah, I know. Uh, Look at this thing. Yeah, I own this one, and bl believe me, it's been a great performer. And it is today, with its strength today, moving to about a two and a half, almost three month relative high. It doesn't have much further to go to get to a four month relative high, and it's in that hot restaurant space. We talked about Starbucks earlier. Chipotle is another one that's been doing great. Look at the volume. Beautiful move last week with its earnings. Yeah, and the last one is AMD. Yep, another one I own. Actually, I, I I own all the stocks that are in my model portfolio, and this is another one in the model portfolio. Chipotle's in there as well. Um, just another great performer. Semiconductors have finally caught fire. AMD, you might look at it and say, well, you know, its relative strength hasn't been that great the last seven weeks or so. But look at what it did prior when the semis were coming down. It actually was wildly <laughs> outperforming. You can see it. I, yep. Yeah, I just think it's consolidating. I think we're going to get a big report out of it out of AMD. Yeah. Uh, when they report their earnings next. I'm bringing these stocks up because we have an event going on tonight that uh, love to have people join us. You're going to be in there with us. And we're going to be looking at these types of stocks. Yep. The ones that reported solid earnings and could be, you know, if your patient gets set up for nice moves to the upside. Also, you know, even though there's been a lot of earnings reports, there's still a ton to come out the next couple of weeks. Yep. And there, there are some companies you'll identify some, you know, that, um, could be, you know, ready for a nice takeoff uh, once they report earnings. And if you go right to that, yeah, right to that, to our website, earningsbeats.com, to the About Us section and click on that Q2 earnings webinar link, right, it'll uh, allow you to sign up. It's seven bucks to get in, <laughs> okay? So if you have a uh, solid hour plus tonight, uh, come on and join us. We'd have love to have you. Tom's going to be uh, front and center. Uh, talking about some stocks that really could have tremendous moves to the upside. And um, I want to mention one other thing, Tom, because you mentioned your model portfolio a few times. Um, in about three weeks, a little over three weeks, about three weeks, uh, going to be the next top 10 pick webinar. These are quarterly. And uh, the last time we had you join us was in May, May 19th. And that's when you unveil 10 stocks in the model, aggressive and income portfolios that have just cranked. <laughs> so all I can say is they've just cranked and uh, you're going to be unveiling the next batch then. But people that sign up for this event tonight uh, will be included in that webinar as well. So you want to get educated. You want to uh, look at some stocks that could really make significant moves. Come join us tonight. Yeah. So it's a one month trial. 
John, a $7. Yeah, 30 day trial. Uh, plus, you get access to our strong earnings chart list. We just updated it literally today. There's 137 stocks that are on our strong earnings chart list. And this is particularly useful for people who are stockcharts.com extra or higher level members because we can share the list right into your account. Yep. So that you could you'll have all 137 stocks that we've already scanned and found, and you'll be able to look for those that meet your trading cart criteria. So yep. uh, you get that, and then um, again, um, any trade alerts we have our daily market update. Importantly, the webinar tonight, and that one on the 19th is going to be jammed. So yep. it's going to be um, we're going to we're going to full house. So we'd love to have people join us. Yeah, uh, we've got to get running here, but I do uh, just want to mention I will be joining John this afternoon at uh, 4.30. And for that webinar, I mentioned AutoNation earlier. Those are the types of stocks that I'll go over some of the earnings reports that have come out that have just been really, really big um, and I think could uh, produce some great opportunities in the next quarter. And they could find their way onto those, those three portfolios uh, three weeks down the road for sure. So uh, come in and join us if you have some time this afternoon. All right. Always a pleasure to have you on here, John. Okay. Uh, thanks, my friend. Yep. See you in a couple of weeks. Well, actually, I'll see you later this afternoon. All right. So long. See you on Market Watch yep. in a couple of weeks. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. All right. It is time to uh, do the 10 in 10. So let's just jump right in. I know the first stock is going to be Ford. Um, there's Ford, but I also already have it annotated. So let's check that out. All right. Ford. Um, well, we had the huge gap up here. You can see, uh, got up to about 1040, came all the way back down, filled the gap down around 920. And since then, you can see we're just doing this whole back and forth thing. Hey, Tom, uh, you need to take the screen, please. Oh, thank you so much. I thought I had the screen. Um, yeah, that helps uh, for everyone to visualize. Uh, but here is the gap uh, support area that I was talking about. So we gapped up, we moved up to about 1040. There's the 920 support. And Ford's been going sideways. That's the good news. Bad news is Ford on a relative basis to the auto group has been moving lower. And if you go back, not just over the last six months, but if you go back the last eight to 10 years, autos relative to the S&P 500 have just not been very good. So I've never been much of an auto fan. Uh, I think that uh, Ferrari, R-A-C-E, um, at times, um, we've seen some others. Um, you know, that in, in the group that have done well, but Ford has not really been one of those. So I would just simply say this, it pays a 6% dividend. If it gets down to around this nine and a quarter area, perhaps you take a chance there, but I'm not overly interested in rushing out to buy Ford. So I'm, I'm neutral to bearish on Ford at this point. Okay, Tom. Um, next one for you is MU, Micron Technology. Yeah, Micron, uh, I think it looks really good. I love the volume coming in. I like really like a couple of things here. Um, I think that Micron surprised a lot of folks when they came out uh, recently with that huge uh, report right about there on the chart. You can see the volume. Look at all the volume pick up as it goes straight up. So heading into that report, and I would say Micron looks a lot to me like Google did last week. On a relative basis, not doing much. I was expecting nothing out of Micron. I was expecting nothing out of Google, and they came through and they shocked uh, Wall Street with their reports. Look at what Micron's been doing since then. I suspect we'll probably see something similar with Google. I don't think the run in Google is over for the same reason. But now with the relative strength, Semi's doing well, and the relative strength improving on Micron, I like it. Uh, move back to around the 44 level to test that 20-day moving average, I think would be very bullish. Cool. Nice ideas. The The other one is APPS, Digital Turbine. Yeah, this is one that we had or uh, that I went over for my setup from last week. I still like the stock. I mean, I love the group. And I talk about, you know, these relative charts all moving up from left to right going across the screen. And that's exactly what you see here. Software going up, uh, Digital Turbine on a relative basis to its uh, software peers going up. Uh, relative to the S&P going up, and then software relative to the S&P, all going up. So this is the type stock you want. I liked it last week on the pullback because I thought you could manage your risk, keep a fairly tight stop. It did bounce. 
Now, if I was looking at it, I wouldn't be so interested to jump in unless I was going to use the 20 day moving average, my stop, because we're in the middle of a trading range. Still, this has been a great stock. I think it goes higher. Um, I would prefer it back down at 475, 485, just from a reward to risk perspective, may or may not get back down there, but I do like the stock. Nice. Next one up is Qualcomm, QCOM. Yeah, Qualcomm. Um, Qualcomm struggled a little bit when Apple reported last week that they were going after the uh, 5G business of Intel. Um, so it's kind of been going sideways here a little bit. Telecommunications equipment overall trying to break out, but Qualcomm you can see is down from its high that it saw back in May. So as a result, relative strength has been a little weaker over the past couple of months. I would like to see this stock break back up above about 81, which is where it had gapped up. I think if it breaks above 81 and you start to see that relative strength line pick up, then I'd be a little bit more interested in uh, Qualcomm. To the downside, volume picked up toward the end of June from this gap, uh, you know, from the prior low around 72 and a half. So I think we're just sideways consolidating in Qual Qualcomm right now. Let's mm. see which way breaks between these two levels and then go from there. Got it. Uh, next one, KRE. All right, KRE, and of course, we're now moving back. It's the over, regional banking ETF. Yep, back into the banks. I don't need it on uh -huh. a regular basis, but um, let's take a look just on the chart here. I do want to go back a little further than this. So let's go a couple years here. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting. The banks are starting to show some strength. Now, I showed you, or I talked about earlier, the fact that the banking index overall, the Dow Jones U.S. Bank Index, was breaking out. The regional banks haven't yet done that. So it's, I think the larger banks are holding a little bit of an upper hand. And you can see relative, uh, or not relative, but absolute support back in early 2018, around 57. Look at the failures up around 57. I think it would be bullish if KRE breaks above 57. Until then, I might stick with some of the bigger names that seem to be outperforming. Sounds good. Um... Next one is uh, CYBR, Cyber Arc Software. Must be your favorite. It's technology and it's software. Yep. Well, it's going to be a good one for sure. <laughs> love, the, love the volume coming in. Hey, I don't, I don't argue with the money. You know, when the money's True flowing, um, you know, when things start to turn around, then we'll have a different ball game. Right now, I think this test of the 20-day moving average, this looks a lot very similar to the APPS that I looked at last week. Today's candle looks a lot like APPS from last week. I broke down below the 20 day. It tested the area of the breakout. It's come back up above the 20. I think it's got a good chance to reverse back up to that 147, 148 level and ultimately break out. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm, I'd am i be looking to see if it does close today above that 20 day moving average. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, next one is Oracle or CL. Right. Oracle kind of changed uh, character on its chart with its earnings report. Coming down, testing the 20-day, bouncing back up again. You can see it's part of software. Oracle did make a big move in terms of relative strength, came back down as it was consolidating here. I think Oracle could make another push to the upside. I wouldn't be surprised to see Oracle begin to gain relative strength again. That was a really nice earnings report. There's your major support level, in my opinion. Down about that 55 and a half, 56 area. That's where your 50 days coming up. I think I'd be okay sticking with Oracle as long as it doesn't lose yeah. that support level and as long as it doesn't start to really tank on a relative basis versus the software group as a whole. Yeah. RRG supports you with that. It just rotated from weakening back into leading. So it looks like it's going for the next phase. Um, next stock up is MSP. Oh, NSP, right? NSP. November share up up. up. Yeah, that's in parity. I think they just reported their earnings. They came out 83 cents versus 83 cents expected. Uh, obviously, market that wasn't good enough for the stock today. It was actually this is the opposite of what we talked about with Google um, and the surprise there, along with Micron, where the market wasn't expecting much and then they overdelivered. Here's a company where Wall Street um, was looking for a lot more than what Insperity delivered. And when I see something like this, where you've got leadership and all of a sudden they don't do what Wall Street was expecting. Uh, for me, it's a toss. I just throw it out. I don't want anything to do with it for a while. I think when companies come up short of what analysts are expecting, I think it can take a while to build back trust. 
There is your gap support from February back here around 110, 111. We got down close to that earlier today. I think we'll revisit and probably break below it. I'm not a fan. All right. Next one is for our Canadian friends, uh, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, cm.to. All right. Won't be able to get my relative charts going there, but let's take a look on the chart. Um, yeah, we've got some work to do here, and I'm going to stretch it out just a bit. Let's go a year. Um, yeah, there's still a lot of work. This has been downtrending. I think you're going to find that there are obviously some other banks out there that are a whole lot uh, better choices. I'm going to throw this area right in here between about 104 and 105. That was a prior support level. We lost that on big volume, came back up, went just above it, and established a high at 105. And now I've gone back down. I think for now, we're in this trading range, maybe 100.50 support to the downside, 104, 105 resistance to the upside. But given the overall downtrend, the fact that a lot of banks are performing a lot better than this, I think you have better options. So I would pass on cm.to. Okay. And the final one is another one from your favorite industry group, software. Uh, it's MDB, Mongo Database. Yeah, this is one that had a huge earning uh, report pulling back, and it's actually at support. Um, there are a number of stocks in this group that are getting hit today, and perhaps it's the start of something to the downside, but I think it's way too early to make that call. I think what you're seeing instead is just consolidation, some profit taking in some of these names. I know there's some others like Trade Desk that had a huge day on Friday uh, that are getting hit. There's a major support level, I would say, from a longer term perspective. And short term, I'd even go back and say that the low we saw late June, early July, and that's where we are now, uh, could hold here. So if I see the stock go down below, say, 140 intraday today and come back up and close above 145, that to me could signal a pretty significant bottom in the stock. I like software. I think this has been a pretty good performer, even though it's, it's probably been underperforming the last two months. I think that's because of consolidation. Uh, this, is, this was a great relative performer when it came out with its earnings. The stock went from 130 to 180 in about a week. Um, we got to give the uh, stock like this some patience. I think it goes higher, and I think this pullback is going to turn out to be an opportunity. Excellent. Well, I haven't timed it, but I think you're pretty good on the mark with 10 minutes. Yeah, I was pretty close. Uh, not too far off. Tried to do my best. Hopefully everybody, well, I guess it doesn't matter whether you agree with me or not on these charts. Everybody has their own opinion. But I did. I always like hearing from you that you agree, Julius, because I know you use the RRG, which is relative strength. And so I always like to get confirmation from the RRG. Did you see any on here by chance that you disagreed with me? Um, no, not really. Oh, not I really. Spice there, a little bit. I mean, the, the, the RRG is like, you know, it's if if you look at your relative strength charts, you know the the odds that it shows up on the RRG in a similar fashion are super high. Uh, maybe we sometimes we have a disagreement uh, on the time frame. So you look at a daily, maybe I look at a weekly. There we can have some discrepancies. Um, but other than that, you know, RRGs track relative strength. They track trends in relative strength. So you know, it would be very strange if your relative strength would be different than the one that I'm tracking. I think the, the the absolute added value of using an RRG is that you can put multiple symbols on that chart. So yeah. when you when you work with relative strength lines, it's usually a one-on-one -on -one comparison. The thing that RRG does, and that's what it was designed to do, is track all these symbols in one graph instead of all these individual graphs. Mm -hmm. So, you know. yeah, and I think too, you know, when we look at um, I'll just give an example, like PayPal. We were talking about PayPal earlier, and this, yeah, is, yeah. this is the relative chart. So it's PayPal colon dollar SPX. And yeah. you can see not only is PayPal rolling over, but on a relative basis, we're at about a two and a half month low versus the S&P 500. Now, I think on your RRG earlier, um, I think you were it's showing- rolling over. It's yeah. in weakening. Yeah. I mean, it, that's, but that's not strange because RRG picked up that whole uptrend that it's on your screen right now from Fab to, let's say, July. And then from the start of July, it started to level off and roll over. That's when PayPal moved from the leading quadrant into weakening. And now it's picking up speed to the downside and you start see it starting to move towards the lagging quadrant. So 
the, the tail on the RRJ is tracking the chart that you have on your screen. Yeah. Um, so if you would create an RRG with just PayPal on it, it would tell that story. Yep. The other thing that's interesting too is that even though PayPal broke out here in July on the chart, on the absolute chart, if you go back relative to the S&P, it did not. So the S&P 500 was moving higher and that created uh, PayPal's breakout, but it couldn't sustain it. And on a relative basis, actually never made it, never actually made that breakout uh, versus yeah. the S&P 500. So yeah, I mean, these relative charts, your RRG charts, they all begin to show you essentially the same thing, which is really yeah. important when you're trading. Yeah, and this, this, by the way, what you're just referring to, the breakout in the S&P and not breaking out in PayPal is what Arthur Hill was referring to last week when we had the relative strength week um, with the high-low relative strength. You know, S&P is breaking out, PayPal is not breaking out. So that's, that's the first clue that PayPal is lagging if it's not following the S&P higher. Yeah, and you also, you know, obviously can look at software or financial administration stocks with PayPal. And if they're breaking out or not breaking down and you're seeing PayPal breaking down, I mean, that would be the other thing. I mean, if you want to compare them, say, to financial administration, um, you know, you could look at this. I mean, we're talking about a multi-month low. Yeah. This is financial administration, whereas, you know, I suggested last week that we could use um, Square, you know, switch out of PayPal and go to Square. And you can see Square was downtrending, but that's changed. And now yeah. Square is out. Well, well, that strength is great for that kind of calls. Definitely. Yep. yep. And by the way, the, the, the stuff that you're doing with, you know, comparing it to multiple benchmarks, I'm working on a project to, um, to have an RRG which, with what I call double benchmarks. So you compare it against, let's say, the S&P and its sector and then plot it on one chart. Um, that's pretty cool stuff. Needs a lot of work. Uh, I need programming time. I need coding time from the guys at Stock Charts. But you know that that this type of idea we can all do with RRG as well, which is super cool. Yeah, that is very cool. I'm I'm uh, anxiously awaiting that development. Um, I do also want to mention on this switch out. I don't know if uh, and you had mentioned earlier, Julius, about relative strength week last week. I know when Mark Chaikin was on last week, he talked about that that idea of using relative strength to switch out stocks. At least I'm pretty sure it was uh, with Mark Chaikin. Mm -hmm. And so when you get a stock that's in a group that all of a sudden underperforms, it's not a bad idea to switch out and go with a stock that's outperforming that group. Um, and you know, rather than continuing to ride down with a stock that you've made a lot of money on, I know you grow attached sometimes when you get these stocks that have performed really well for you. But when they stop performing really well on a relative basis, you got to try to look at it with, a, with an unbiased view. And that's not always easy if you're making money on a stock. Yeah, or a RRG or a relative strength is perfect for divorcing stocks. Yep. All right, I just want to give everybody a quick update. We are getting close to the end of the show here. See the Dow Jones currently up 57 points. NASDAQ uh, is down 47, but that's quite a bit off the low that we did see early this morning. You can see we're probably 30, 35 points off the low on the NASDAQ. I know at one point we were down more than 80 points. So we are getting a little bit of a rebound. I suspect there's going to be a little nervousness as we head into the uh, Fed report. We've probably got about 30 seconds left here, Julius. What do you think with the Fed? Do you think that they're making the right move? Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. The wrong. It's, uh, yes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, with 30 seconds, I probably put you on the spot there. It's hard to discuss it within 30 seconds, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that the Fed, I, I've said for a while, I don't think it's about economic growth. I think it's more about the fact that we don't have the inflationary concerns. The dollar strong, keeping currencies low, U.S. dollar in particular low, and I think that is keeping yeah. inflation in check. And I think that gives them the ability to lower. And you guys still have positive interest rates, so you can lower. We can in Europe. We cannot do it anymore. Exactly. All right. Uh, what well, was a fun show, uh, Julius? So I do want to thank you again for joining us today uh, and subbing for Erin. I'm sure she appreciates it as well, and I know our viewers appreciate it. So thanks again. Uh, I want to thank all of you for being with us today. Please remember to complete the survey as you exit. As a quick reminder, Market Watchers Live airs five days a week, Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great Monday afternoon, everybody, and we will see you back here tomorrow. Happy trading.